by right, we shouldn't be allowed here by right. This is the brand new Q3, all new Q3, not a facelift, whatever, just unveiled globally and it's here. All right, so it's a thorough remake of the car, huge grille up front, a very angular headlamps now. I mean, this is very classic Audi design language nowadays, right? You have this line that seems to make it look like it's a white body, but actually this body line is there all along. It's just that they added this line to make it look like there's a white body effect to it, okay? Give you an overall look of the car. It, yeah, it's not revealed in public yet. And uh, it doesn't have that awkward profile of the previous Q3 anymore. And it's a much, much larger car now. The boot is huge, larger than my S4 boot. You get a metallic scuff plate over here. You get a space saver tire down here. Pretty good, very spacious, very usable. And then uh, you get a power strut over there. This is a 1.4 litre unit, okay? These are the back seats of the car. I'm sure when you pull it, you'll be able to fully flatten it like all Audis do. Oops, something blocking. You can somewhat recline the seats. Ah, that's a very good recline angle. Pretty nice. I get a palm of headroom. I get a palm of knee room. I can slot my feet in between the rear seat base and the rails of the front seat. There are aircon vents down here, but they are very low. They are mounted extremely low here. And at least you can blow the air upwards. Okay, this is something that I noticed that is very un audi like Okay, this is very, okay, the design is very Audi. The way they sculpt the door panels are very Audi, but this is a different grade plastic than all the other cars we have in there. This is rather Volkswagen levels of plastics. Hard, not scratchy, but not the smooth, super high quality type. So this one you can really feel that, oh, this is a different price point. A lower grade plastic, but still not scratchy yet. You have a nice metallic setting chrome garnishing line here with the ambient lighting in there. And then you have a door handle that sort of floats. The design is a floating type instead of the usual ones we have that goes like that. Alright, supposedly to be some buttons, but it was covered here. Even only the driver's side has the door lock and unlock switch. Now, this thing is very un -Audi. This is obviously plastic but it's painted into metallic silver to try and look like it's metallic but it's obviously the moment you touch it it's all out plastic. Now ingress and egress is just about okay because the opening of the door is not exactly wide and it's a small car so that the opening itself is not big and then this one is only about 70 degrees. It's not even 80 or 90 degrees. Okay. Come into the cabin. You see the new design language over there. Okay. Now I noticed this just now. The seat itself doesn't push out far enough. There's a huge portion here that is the, uh, the plastic panels. So what happened is that when you come in here and first thing you sit down, your thigh will be on this plastic before you are on the seats. And there's only about so much space, okay? So when this was compressed, immediately you feel the hot plastics down there. But once you're seated in, it is an okay cabin, okay? You have some soft touch materials here. You have some nice patterns over here, some aluminum um, garnishing over here. The touch sensitive infotainment screen is here. You have the LCD clusters over here. And then uh, we have a usual cruise control stock over here. Small paddle shifters. You have this, this gear lever just, should have just used the old one from all the Golf GTIs or whatever. No, this is a nice compartment. This compartment is long enough 
for a big Note 10 phone, Note 10 Plus in fact. And then you have the really the volume button is over here on this panel with the start stop button. You have these drive select buttons here. Very nice feel to the touch. The buttons. This is classic Audi. Tuck, 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 tuck. All right. BMW use a silent button mechanism. And then the other cars you get a metal ashtray. In Audi you get a plastic removable ashtray, which is all right. And then you have a compartment for your phone. I like that. I really like that. The phone compartment is a separator for the cup holders. Nice. Uh, decent size, not big, not too small. And then I love this. All right? And when you shift, okay, you can't. <laughs> Steering wheel over here. This is very familiar from the previous A4. Okay. Ah, from the current A4, sorry. So just nice, everything is there. It's a small crossover. All right, okay, you have frameless review mirror. It's a small crossover overall. Um, quite a bit of cubby spaces all around the, the door panels here in the center console, the armrest, and the seats are just about okay. Uh, I'm, 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 I've, I've already maximized the maximum width of the seats. So it's a, it's a nice small crossover that is well built. You have USB-C port and a standard USB port. Look at that, that's USB-C, that's standard USB. All right, so that's the new Q3 available for sale. First in the country, first to give you a walk around review of the Q3. Look at that. All right, so this will go against the Mercedes GLA it will go against the BMW X1 and the Volvo XC40. Now the BMW X1 is locally assembled and it's 220,000. This is a fully imported CPU, estimated to be somewhere about 240,000. All right, so the Volvo XC40 is about 250,000. So rather competitive, but none of them is as big as the XC40 from what I can see. This is similar to the X1 in size, and all of them are definitely larger than the GLA. All right? Of course, the thing GLA has another one that is similar in size to it, which would be the Lexus UX, which hasn't arrived yet. All right? That's the new Q3. Cheers. Oh, a shout out to Audi Center Satya Alam for allowing us to come here to review this car. And uh, come check it out.